Hello everyone. Welcome to Summer Reading 2020 at Snyder County Libraries. I'm Sherry and you've probably been watching me for the last few weeks, but maybe not. Um, Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock if you come to our YouTube channel or if you've joined our Facebook group, you can watch me as we create our story. The theme for summer reading this year is Imagine Your Story. And if you sign up for summer reading at any of our branches, you'll get a bag of goodies for each family. And inside there are fun things like watercolor paints, pop rocks, some neat pencils and pens. These are just a few of the things. A little container of Play-Doh, paper, instructions, and lots of ideas for fun. The bags are designed to be used along with the videos that we'll be recording. And so some of the things in there you won't know what to do with until you've watched our videos and then you will understand how to use the things in there. So I would encourage you to just hold off a little bit on using the things until you see what we have in mind for you. And that is myself, uh, Miss LeBeau, Miss Sue, and Linda, who are doing programs. And also there's going to be some challenges that we'll be putting out there. And doing these things will help you to earn prizes for the summer reading, the reading that you do, and the time you spend doing the activities. All right, but the first episode for creating your story with Sherry, I'm going to read a story called My Love for You is the Sun. It's actually a poem in picture book form. It's written by Julie Headland, and it's illustrated by Susan Eady. Actually, what it says here is art by Susan Eady. Put this down so you can see better. Because Susan didn't actually draw the pictures in this book. It looks very much like what she did was made them out of clay, some kind of clay, different colors. As you can see, they're, they look three-dimensional. means they stand out. They're not just flat on the page. Let's look at the poem, then we'll talk about the art a little bit more. My love for you is the sun. Picture me show you this first. The sun. And there's a mother kitten. Looks like she's cleaning that little little baby kitten. Or excuse me, a mother cat cleaning her baby kitten. And the poem says, My love for you is the sun. Rising in your tender heart. It shines on you when we're apart. Sounds nice. And the next page. My love for you is a tree, giving shelter, strength, and shade. It comforts you when you're afraid. My love for you is a tree. And in this tree, we've got, what are those? Koala bears? I guess they're properly called koalas. What kind of a tree is that? I'm not going to tell you the answer. You can look it up. My love for you is a river, constant, flowing, sapphire blue. It guides the path ahead of you. Nice. My love for you is the river. And there we have a duck, a mama duck, and possibly a papa duck, and a couple little baby ducks following behind. Look how blue that river is. Sapphire blue. A sapphire is a very blue gemstone. My love for you is the rain. Sprinkling down its soothing song, it keeps you blooming, growing strong. And this is a frog, parent frog, and a baby frog. And look. The frog's got his tongue sticking out. He's catching a raindrop. Wow. 
You must be pretty fast. What I'm offering you is the rain. We need rain. My love for you is the wind, blowing kisses in your ears. It wipes away your salty tears. Oh. Mama horse and baby horse, my love for you is the wind. That's a nice thought. My love for you is the snow, making all the world shine white. It brings you wonder, peace, and light. And here we have a polar bear, mama and baby. Maybe it's more than one. Icicles. Oh, they just climb up on her belly. And they lick her face. That's how they say I love you. Those are polar bear kisses, I'll tell you. <clears throat> My love for you is the ocean. Glimmering, vast, forever deep. With waves to rock you till you sleep. Look at those fish. And I see some seals up here at the top of the picture. All mamas love their babies, don't they? Look at all the different colors. I see a turtle there. I see something that looks like maybe a squid. There's a lot to see in these pictures. My love for you is a star. Sparkling gemstone in the sky, it keeps you under watchful eye. Mama raccoon, baby raccoon. And the sky and stars. That looks like a quiet town. It's nighttime. That's usually when raccoons are out running about. Sleep now, baby. Let your head lie upon moonbeams. My love will come to visit you even in your dreams. And look, at the beginning we had a sun, and now we've got a moon. There's the kitten again, and the mama cat, all snuggled down. If you look carefully, what's in the background in this picture? What's in the doorway? See that? I think that might be a person, a human mom holding a baby. Okay, so such a nice book in the end pages. There's some bunnies. Let's look really carefully at the front of it again. The first page, my love for you is the sun. Look at that. Pictures made out of dough. Do you know you can tell stories with things like sculpture? That's what this is called. When you take something <clears throat> and make art out of something that's three-dimensional, it doesn't have to be dough. Sculpture doesn't have to be made out of dough. You can make sculpture out of wood, out of metal, out of paper, just about anything you can think of. But the thing that makes it a sculpture is that you do it with your hands, you make it with your hands, and you form it somehow. And it's something that is three-dimensional. It doesn't, it doesn't just lay flat on the table. It stands out. It stands up. It stands up or sticks out, I should say. Okay. Today, I thought we would make some sculpture. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a recipe for some homemade dough that you might want to try at your house. This dough, for this dough, you will need, let me get my book, you will need seven to eight pieces of white bread. It should be white bread, not wheat bread, not something really thick, and it should be pretty, pretty uh, fresh, fresh and soft bread. Okay, seven or eight pieces of white bread, six drops of lemon juice or one teaspoon liquid dish soap, and it calls for six tablespoons of white glue. Now, eight tablespoons of white glue is one half cup 
Okay. So what I did was I just took a half measuring cup and filled it up to, you know, within a little bit of the top of that. <clears throat> Excuse me, so a little bit less than a half a cup of white glue. All right. You take and you trim the crust off of the bread. You cut the, the drier pieces off the edges. And then you break up the bread into small pieces in a bowl, very small pieces. It doesn't have to be quite tiny crumbs, but just sort of small pieces. And then you mix, you pour the glue in, you mix it together with a spoon, and then you mash it together with the back of a spoon. And that seems to really work that glue into the dough. After you think you have it mashed together with the spoon pretty good, add the lemon juice or dish soap. When I made mine, I used dish soap. I thought that that would just make a more smooth texture and it came out pretty good. And then you're gonna to wanna to grease your hands with vegetable shortening, with Crisco, with oil, it could be olive oil, vegetable oil, coconut oil, whatever you've got, because you don't want, it's gonna be sticky. And you want it, you wanna be able to form it and knead it without it all just sticking all over your hands. You might have to grease your hands a couple of times. I did. All right. And then it says to knead the dough five or 10 minutes until smooth. And so then you just kind of work it, work it, work it. You can put it down on a table that's greased if you want to and push on it and just get, get the lumps worked out of it. When you're ready to make something with your dough that you made, you're going to grease your hands again, this time maybe a little bit light, more lightly, and then you make it into something. I want to show you what this dough looks like. So I made some this morning. And I'm going to put gloves on so that I don't have to wash my hands while we're still doing our activities. I'll just take my gloves off when I'm done. All right. And you don't have to use gloves for this. I would say just um, grease your hands again a little bit. Okay. I'm going to grease the gloves. I don't know if it'll stick to these gloves or not. We'll find out. Here's what the dough looks like after you've made it. That makes a pretty decent amount. It makes a lot more than this. I'll show you in a minute. See how it's squishy? I suppose if you wanted to, you could put food coloring in there and color it. I just left mine white, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But once you have it like that, you can put it on a table or something. You can form it. You can try to make it stand up and be some kind of a sculpture like that. When you work with it, you can see it's a little bit soft. It might be a little bit wieldy. But pretty much you can make it do what you want it to do. Maybe you want to make a person out of it. This is turning into a person with a head. Maybe it's a lady with a gown on. It's very big. Sometimes, in fact, sculptors will tell you this, sometimes they don't know what they're making until they start to work. And then... The medium that they're using, the material that they're using, they say sort of tells them what to make. I'm not sure exactly what that means because I'm not a sculptor. Well, I do know what it means, but I don't know that I have that ability. But this is turning into a lady in a ball gown. Now, if you don't want to make your own glue, but you would like to model something, you can also use good old Play-Doh. I thought I would show you how to, well, not like you need to be told how to work with Play-Doh, you just turn it into whatever you want. Um, the book that we read had a lot of animals in it, but I noticed it didn't have any snakes. Snakes is something that it seems like, snakes and worms are something that seems like it's one of the most fun things to make with Play-Doh, because all you do is you take your little hunk of Play-Doh and you roll it, roll it, roll it, and it turns into a rope. It's also the way to, well, there you go. Here we have a, a worm, maybe a snake. Let's give it a flat head here. 
That looks more like a snake. Or another thing you might want to do, oh, we've got some of the white dough in there, is people that do sculpture, sometimes potters will make a long rope with their clay. You can do this with your homemade clay too. And then they just work it around into sort of like a circle. Then they take that circle, they bend the edges up, and look, they've made, whoops, <laughs> a dish. Okay, you could take your time with it and it will turn out better than that, I think. All right, let's put the Play-Doh away for now. And let me show you the things I made today with the homemade dough. One thing I made was a sun. I got the idea from the book, obviously. And I sort of tried to make it look a little bit like the sun in the book, but it, it doesn't, doesn't come out quite that way. And another thing I made with that dough was a star. Okay. I think it looks a little bit better that way, maybe. Now, the book where I got the recipe tells me that you will need to lift these things. These things will dry hard. Play-Doh will too, but it might get a little cracky. I'm very, very excited to see how well this will dry. But it says it will take a few days. I have them on a plate today to show to you guys, but I think if when I take it home, I will put it on a rack. So that a rack, like a baker's rack, cake rack, so that air will get in underneath it too and it will dry quicker that way and dry better, all right? So when this is good and dry, then you can actually take paint, any kind of paint you might have, if you have acrylic paint, poster paint, if you wanna make your own glue paint or anything like that, there are recipes for that in your goodie bag for summer readers, and just paint it however you want, all right? And you can even glaze it after it's painted if you wanna put some kind of a sealer on it, you can do that. I'm gonna bring them back out in a few weeks, I think, in a week or so, after I've worked with them some more to see what we can come up with there. Okay, um, I'm wondering, while we're talking about things that we do and then we come back and talk about later, I wonder if any of you who made mud pies have had any success with your butterfly mud pie. I put my butterfly mud pie out on my picnic table and it got rained on a few times so I had to put some more maple syrup on it and I didn't get any butterflies but I did get regular flies. So that was interesting. Maybe the butterflies will come at another time, I don't know. I haven't yet planted my wildflower mud pies but I'm planning to do that this weekend probably I'm going to. Take my wildflower mud pie and I'm going to throw it down somewhere and spread those seeds. If you don't know what I'm talking about because you didn't watch that video, you can go back and find it on our YouTube channel. And also, we have some wildflower seeds in that bag I showed you earlier that you can use to make a wildflower mud pie sometime if you would like. Okay, well thanks for coming. Thanks for doing summer reading with Snyder County Libraries. I will see you next week, and we will create our own story with something new next week. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Bye.